welcome guys today I'm gonna teach you to create this game you can be a total beginner it doesn't matter I will walk you through everything if you have any issues understanding me please let me know English is my second language and I'm very new to using a microphone so if you cannot understand me if I mess up please let me know in the comment section so I can fix it all the source code it's available on patreon.com and you'll find a link in the description. If you mess up, if it doesn't work for you, you can pull, out, pull home my source code and compare to yours to see where you went wrong. And last of all, I'm using Oculus Link so that I can test directly inside Unity. This makes everything so much easier and you should use Oculus Link as well. It's very simple. Just Google how to do it. I should have a video up, up soon of how to do it, but there's a millions of videos of how to do it, so just figure it out. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna need a plane, some kind of player area. So right click in the hierarchy, 3D object and plane. Now the plane is quite small. We need to make it bigger in the X, AKA the red arrow, and bigger in the C, AKA the blue arrow. The green arrow is obviously Y, but we don't need to change that because planes don't have any thickness or height. So next we want to create the start point and the end point where the balloons will travel. Let's hit Y to get a top down view of the, of the player area. Right click in the hierarchy, 3D object, cube, rename it to start. Copy it. By clicking on it, Control D, you see there's a copy right below, and the copy is selected. So move, and now we're only moving the copy, the original is still in the original position. Anyway, move the copy to wherever you want the finish to be, rename it, finish, select the start one, and put it wherever you want the start to be. That's good. So it is kind of hard to see the start and the finish cube right now since they are the same color as the plane. So let's go to the assets folder, right click, create a new folder, name it materials. It's good to create folders whenever you're building anything, bringing anything new into your project. That way you can keep track and keep it or organized from the beginning. If you start going messy, the result will be very messy anyway in materials right click create material let's do start green uh, select the color picker whatever green you like oh, that didn't work what happened oh yeah <laughs> of course uh, you need to move move this one around to select the color it's selected drag it to green uh, to start now the start one is green do the same for red uh, do the same for finish and make it red And you can drag this to the hierarchy or straight to the cube. It will be the same thing. Now let's create a third kind of cube. We call it waypoint. Just copy finish or start. It doesn't really matter. Control D. Rename the copy to, oh sorry, rename it to waypoint. move it from uh, away from the copy whatever you copied place it wherever and then drag it down go to your assets folder drag it down to create a prefab of the waypoint this way if we ever change anything in the waypoint in the prefab all the waypoints that we have in the scene will change now Let's create an empty game object in the hierarchy, call it waypoints. Oh. Inside here, 
you can drag in the waypoint and then copy it control D move it control D move it control D move it and this will be the path that the balloons will take control D and just keep doing this and build out however you want them to move there we go so now we got all the waypoints but they're red we want them to be a different color than the start and the finish so let's create a material for now in the assets folder we will move it to materials folder in a little in a little bit right click material call it waypoint black choose the color picker go black open up the prefab by double clicking it drag the color to it and this is the prefab view this is why the view changed to return you hit the little arrow the top of the hierarchy new back and the waypoints are now black now you can drag the new material to the material folder next it's time to create some kind of balloon uh, don't worry about the look of it or uh, don't worry about the look of anything right now when making a game it's my it's my view that you first worry worry about the mechanics make the mechanics great the art can be changed it can be changed again and again it doesn't matter but shitty mechanics is shitty mechanics it's very hard to fix once once you're done so great mechanics first art second anyway select the start go back to ground view uh, or what, whatever you want to call it now hit F once the start is selected to zoom in on it right above the start point we can create a sphere and let that represent the balloon for now close the waypoints uh, just to get them out of the way 3d object sphere move it up a little bit I feel like this is a good height and uh, just to make it easy let's use the start green the green balloons will be the ones that pop with one shot and you know you can make harder and harder balloons like like in the game uh, we can actually select this as a uh, rename it to balloon uh, name it to green balloon actually uh, balloon green uh, select the balloon right click on it add 3d object capsule uh, sorry yeah capsule or cylinder it will be the same thing really it's gonna simulate a rope so let's do cylinder it's very big let's make it a lot smaller in the X and in the C move it down make it smaller in the Y maybe 0.4 yeah, that looks good rename it to string and drag the black material to it see that's balloon balloon like it's cool so now let's create a simple little script to make the balloon move so in your assets folder right click create another folder named scripts i have already done it but you go right click create folder name it scripts go to the script folder right click create c sharp script name it uh, i'm gonna name it balloon you can name it whatever you like double click to open okay copy this script uh, I'll walk you through it quickly here and it's always available on Patreon. You find a link to that in the description. If you have any issues, just hit me up in the comment section or on Patreon and I'll try to help you out.
Okay, so first we keep track of all the waypoints in an array. We keep track of the index, which will be the next waypoint we visit uh, with the balloon. And we got the health, we got the speed. Every frame, the update function is called automatically by the Unity framework. And every frame we call mo the move the balloon function. In the move balloon function, we keep track of uh, the last waypoint index, meaning so we can know when the balloon hits the end of the waypoints, the finish line. We keep track of the vector free positions, the x, y and z values of the last waypoint, the next waypoint and the direction which the balloon is moving. We get the direction by taking the next waypoint minus the balloon position right now. Uh, when you do this in a script, transform dot position without anything else before this, uh, that means we're talking about this object that the script is applied to. This, uh, this script will be applied to the balloon. So we are reaching the transform dot position x, y, and c, uh, c values of the balloon. It's good to know. Then here we check if the enemy is more than 0.1 oh meters from the last waypoint by getting the distance between the balloon and the last waypoint. If so, if, we, if we're not at the end yet, keep moving to, towards the next waypoint by taking the direction, excuse me, times speed times time dot delta time in world space. Same thing here, we check the distance of the balloon to the next waypoint if it's less than 0.5, meaning we reach the next waypoint and the next waypoint is not the last waypoint, increase the waypoint index. So the next frame, when this uh, method is called again, this number will be higher and the balloon will be sent to the next waypoint in the list. Hope that makes sense to you. If not, that's okay. It takes time. Just to uh, copy me and you will understand it sooner or later. If the balloon hits the finish line, that is, if the next waypoint index is the same as the last waypoint index and the distance from the balloon to the last waypoint is less than 0.5 meters, then just destroy the balloon for now. We can animate whatever here, but right now just destroy it to make sure it works. Remember to hit Control S to save, if you have a little star up here, the script is not saved and it will not compile and work. So always control, control S. So back in the Unity editor, we now need to apply the balloon script to the balloon. You can either do it by selecting the balloon, click add component, search for balloon and the script will pop up. Now we have it here. You can also just drag and drop it straight in here or straight to here. Uh, so first here we need to fill in our waypoints. Now I realized I did this in a stupid order because look, the first waypoint should be this one. I started here. So now if we just apply these waypoints, the balloon will go straight to here and then continue to these and then follow follow in in uh, this order and that's not right so what we want to make sure is the first waypoint is in the top of the list second waypoint is second and so on for me it's the first three or four that's messed up and the rest are correct so now I think we could just like that Select the balloon, hit the little lock icon, so the inspector will, will not change. If you now select something else, the balloon is still selected in the inspector. inspector. So, shift, click to select all of them, drag them to the waypoints. Now we have our array of waypoints. Nice. Set the speed to maybe 10 for now, so it's a little bit quicker and hit play to test.
scene. There we go, the balloon is moving, but there's an issue. Oh, sorry. See, the balloon is going underground. But it's getting destroyed, and everything seems to be working very nicely. Except the little thing that the balloon is going below the ground. And that's because we're telling the balloon to go straight to the waypoints. And when it's half a meter from the waypoint, it will go to the next. But it will go as close as possible and the waypoints are basically underground. So what we need to do is add a little bit of an offset to the balloon. And I have prepared that already. It's commented out so I could explain it better. What we do here is instead of the next next waypoint and the last waypoint just being the exact position of the waypoint we're adding 0 to the x 2 to the y and 0 to the c so we're basically saying that 2 meters above the position of the waypoint is where you're supposed to go and this is how vector free math works it's not very complicated. It will only add to the, this is X, this is Y, this is C. We're only adding to the Y, so it will only go two meter plus on the Y. Okay, so save this and play again. And now it should travel correctly. Great. Ah, that's looking good. So it's time to bring in the Oculus integration. Uh, if you're watching this and the latest Oculus integration is this one, released the 20th of uh, December 2019, don't use this hot mess. It's, uh, it doesn't work correctly. It got a bunch of issues. So instead I'm using the previous integration uh, if you don't know where to get this, I have a video, a short two minute video explaining how to do this. Uh, I will link it right now in the top right corner. Uh, also link it in the description. Anyway, import this integration instead. So now we have the Oculus integration in the assets folder. You can remove the main camera. Search for OVR player controller. Drag it into the hierarchy. Might take a little bit of time to process. There we go. Let's create some kind of dart gun, uh, a rudimentary dart gun. We can change it later, but let's create something that will shoot the darts uh, for the player. So in the OVR player controller, go into the tracking space the right hand or if your left hand left hand right click uh, 3d object let's make it a cube and now resize this cube to make it look like more of a barrel move it outside of the camera for now because it's in the way that looks good control D to copy it and then this little tool I didn't copy it control D now this tool to spin the copy now go back to this tool to move the copy and this tool to change the size Spin, and I move it into place to make it kind of a, a gun shape, you know. Don't worry about how it looks really. And let's drag the black material from earlier to it so we can see it. Great, that's a beautiful gun, isn't it? You want to make sure these are children of each other so 
let's call this the barrel this is the handle I want to drag the handle as a child to the barrel so now that they will move in unison if we choose the barrel and move they will move together now these are children of the right hand controller so we can choose uh, the barrel or a stupid name actually let's say gun let's even do dart gun select the dart gun and zero out all the position values which will put it at the zero position relative to its parent which is the right controller anchor aka the right hand and there we go let's test this out so uh, it looks good but it's it needs to rotate 90 degrees this way I'm holding it correctly now but it's in the wrong direction so let's spin it I'm sorry about the fan noise guys it's temporary let's spin the gun choose the dark gun go to the transform and this is the Y we're supposed to spin the Y it might be something different for you depending on how you build it but anyway this is supposed to be minus 90 and now it's straight in the same direction as the hand is pointing next we need a barrel location for the gun so we can tell where the darts are supposed to exit the gun or appear in space if you will so create an empty game object as a child of the dart gun name it barrel oh. rename it barrel location and drag it to where you want the dart to exit the gun right there is good the blue arrow is supposed to be pointing in the direction you want to shoot since the blue arrow is forward great let's create a dart that the gun will shoot so just in the hierarchy 3d object hmm. let's create a capsule spin it around 90 degrees in X and then let's make it a lot smaller this is a huge dart let's try this first let's keep it close to the gun so we can see relative how big it is way too big You can also click and drag to change with the mouse. Let's revert, revert that, control C or Z. Same thing. Make it a little bit longer. That's too long, I say. Let's try 10. and still a little bit smaller maybe 4.02 yeah let's do that then as a child uh, name this dart first and as a child of dart you want to create uh, a cube position it in the back uh, resize it That's good. Control D to copy. Oh, well, name it first, so you don't have to name both. And call this uh, wing. Control D to copy, and then we'll spin the copy. Uh, why are you not spinning? Ah, there we go, yes. So, do 90. And that's great. I'm gonna be happy with that just make it black and then we can make nicer ones later or we can make the wings red actually oh no control Z, C, 
Control Z. And that's a nice looking dart. Let's give a tag to the dart. Uh, select the dart, add a tag, little plus sign, call it dart. Select the dart again and apply the tag. There we go. Make sure that the collider of the dart is checked as is trigger. Now, drag the dart to create a prefab of it into the assets folder. Create a new folder, call it, uh, what we're gonna call it, maybe weapons. Oh, that didn't work. Why can I not? Rename. I'm not sure what's happening. Drag the dart to the new folder and rename it. Well, I've never seen this before. I'll, I'll rename it later. This is the weapons folder. Anyway. So I had to restart the Unity to <laughs> change the folder name. That's a weird bug I never had before. Uh, we should also add a rigid body to the dart. So select the dart prefab, add component, search rigid body, select the top one, not the 2D one. Uh, uncheck use gravity. We don't really want the darts to be falling. We just want them to travel straight. And now we need to add a little script to the dart gun. You can actually remove, as long as you created the prefab and you have it in your folder here, you can remove the dart from the hierarchy. And now let's create a script on our dart gun. Select it, add component, let's call it dart gun. New script, create and add. Open up the script and copy this. I try to make it sim as simple as possible so you can easily follow. First we have our dart prefab that we created, the barrel location and the shoot power. Here we're checking for a, bu a button down on the Oculus Touch controller. Uh, the button is supposed to be the primary index trigger off the right touch controller. So if we pull the trigger, this whole thing will evaluate to true and we will call the shoot script. In the shoot script, we instantiate a dart. The dart prefab in the barrel location position, the position of the barrel location, and in the rotation of the barrel location. So we now have our dart, we get the rigid body component of the dart and we add force to it. We add force in the barrel location forward times the shoot power. We should actually do this uh, times time dot delta time as well. So that if you have a very powerful computer, it won't go any faster. Uh, it makes sure that it will run in the same speed on all hardware. I guess in this case we're all running Oculus Quests, but they might be slower or faster depending on what you have done with it. And then, since the dart was not in the correct uh, rotation for me, it was coming out uh, standing up and we wanted it flying like a dart, I had to adjust the angles, the Euler angles of the dart by doing this to make it to make it uh, fly properly. If this is not correct for you, you can try comment it out like this and change these values until the dart is in the correct position. 
And then after three seconds, we destroy the dart, just so we don't have a million darts flying around after playing the games for a while. Uh, it will make the game super slow. If you're making a game and you are instantiating and destroying a lot of objects, so maybe millions of lasers or thousands of them or whatever, this system of doing it, instantiating a new one and destroying each one, is not a good idea. It will tax your hardware unnecessar unnecessarily hard. In that case, it's better that you do bullet recycling. I'm not going to go into that right now, but you can Google it. It's not very hard. All right, save and test it out. So back in the Unity Editor, we need to select the gun and apply the script. We need to drag in the dart prefab to the dart prefab slot and the barrel location to the barrel location slot. There we go. Okay guys, let's test it out. Okay, close enough. We need to adjust the barrel location 90 degrees in the Y. In my case, might be something else for you. You might not even have to adjust it, but if you had that issue I had, adjust the barrel location. And there we go. Very slow, but in the right direction. Choose the dart gun. Let's make it maybe 100,000. Oh no, that's gonna be very. F Let's do 20,000. And test it again. Look at that. A little bit slow. St still slow, but you can see where we're going with this. Awesome. So let's make it possible to pop the balloon uh, by hitting it with the dart. So select the dart. Make sure the tag is dart. That it has a rigid body, a collider that is trigger. This, uh, this needs to be at the dart. Now select the balloon. Open the script and add this method. So here we're checking if another collider enters the balloon and the other collider's tag is dart then destroy this game object which is the balloon okay so uh, we can animate something else in here but for now just destroy it uh, let's uh, test it out turn the speed down on the balloon uh, so it doesn't go too fast uh, I'm gonna use two for now uh, oops so press play and we move around with the thumbstick since we're using uh, the, uh, the OVR player controller yeah awesome So now let's make a prefab of the balloon green, green balloon. Uh, create a new folder first. Call it balloons. Open it and drag the balloon in there. Now we can change, copy the green balloon, control D rename the copy to balloon blue and in balloon blue 
we need to change the color first of all go to materials create a new material call it balloon blue move it away from the first one so we don't mix them up apply the blue give it two in health and maybe you can leave the speed like this for now go into the newly created balloons folder and drag balloon blue into it Ori original prefab and there we go we can now remove this for now we can actually remove this too so we need to modify the balloons script a little bit to make sure we take the health into consideration so if the balloon gets hit with a dart health minus minus this would subtract one from health every time we end up here so then if health is less than one or let's do less than or equal to zero meaning there's no health less uh, left then destroy the balloon let's test this out now so drag the green and the blue balloon into the scene press play and test you can see they do not move right now this is because the waypoints do not follow the prefab when you save it so what we need to do is create a new tag to all the waypoints call it waypoints I have already created this but you go add tag the plus sign say waypoints save it uh, select all the waypoints and apply the tag then you need to go to the balloon script you can do this by selecting one of the balloons double click on balloon here so we need to make some small changes let's make this game object instead of tra transform and we add the start function the start function runs once whenever the script uh, or the object is initialized so here we want to go the waypoints equals game object dot find game objects with tag waypoints and this is case sensitive so be sure to spell this exactly the same as you did uh, with the tag then we also have to make a small change here since this the waypoints is now an array of game objects not an array of transforms we need to reach the transform property in the game object and that's it this should work now yeah great they are a little bit too close, but that's nothing. Let's create another balloon, make it red, and we make that one a little bit more durable. So, well, let's copy the blue one here, drag it out, go to the materials, use the red. Let's put this one to maybe five. Ah, uh, let's do three. Uh, and the speed we can deal with later. 
nice and this one should actually work now right away great so go to balloon folder and make a prefab of this one we just created rename it first balloon rig Nice. Now we can remove this for now. So now we want the balloons to change color. So if a red gets hit, it will turn to blue. If a blue get hit, it will turn to green. And when the green get hit, it will pop. So open up the script again. If you still have these. Uh, unused usings you can remove them only leave the ones that are filled in so first add this private material to the top in the start method we get the material from the balloon and set the end material to this and we need to add these few lines of code So if the health is 2, make the material blue. If the health is 1, make ma ma material green. And if it's 0, uh, destroy the balloon. So let's test it out. green should pop right away blue should turn green yes and pop blue green pop awesome now we want to create some kind of a game loop or like an object that will send waves of balloons so let's delete these again create an empty game object Uh, let's call it I'm gonna call it waves so select the waves object add component create a script I'm gonna call it waves create an add so copy this short script uh, I'll only explain it briefly we got the difficulty, the increased speed of the difficulty, starting position, and the prefab for the balloon. We only need the green prefab, the blue and the red ones we do in code instead, it's nicer. We got the timer to make sure the, the balloons don't spawn every frame, but with one second in between. We increase the difficulty every frame, uh, well, every by every balloon, uh, by the increased speed. And then we instantiate a balloon, increases health by the difficulty and the speed by the difficulty. We also need to move these lines of code. We can remove this else, move it into the update function. So now we check every frame on, on the balloon for its health and set the color of it. So we can add red as well here. like that now inside unity create this an empty game object name it oh, name it starting position put it around your start position and then we drag it to the script we just created on the waves and the green balloon prefab to the wave script and then press play there should be a few, one or two green balloons, and then they should turn blue as of now. Exactly. C 
So I think we should test what we have so far. So select the dart gun, uh, up the speed to maybe 200,000 and uh, press play to see how it works. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, nice. Uh, I think we should add another spawn location over there. So we get two rows of balloons. They will add some a more tactical elements to the game. All right. So go to top view. Select a waypoint and copy it. And drag the copy outside of the array of waypoints because this will be a separate array move it to wherever you want the next start to be uh, maybe you want to change color of these ones uh, let's create a prefab so that we have uh, two separate uh, two separate prefabs for the waypoints and we can change the colors uh, colors at once by changing the prefab there we go I'm gonna make this one red for now just so we have something different we can change that later and just do the same thing as before control D move control D move nice let's create an empty game object and I did the same thing again or no it's just up there all right so yeah great uh, an empty game object Name it uh, waypoints two. And drag all the new waypoints to the waypoints two object. So now we want to make the balloons use uh, both of our waypoint paths. So in the balloon script, First, on startup, you create, we create a random number between 1 and, oh, sorry, 0 and 1. Uh, it's 0 and 2 here, but the first number is inclusive, meaning we count the 0. The second number is exclusive, meaning we do not count that. We only count until the number before. This was really confusing to me when I started programming, so don't worry if you don't understand it. If you hover over here, you can see it too. Return a random integer number between minimum inclusive and maximum exclusive. So anyway, this will be a number between one, uh, zero and one. If it's a zero, let's populate this balloon's waypoints with the first waypoints. If it's one or anything but zero, there will be one. Populate it with the second, uh, second uh, array of waypoints. Hey guys, while testing this game, I realized I forgot something kind of important. We need to make sure that the waypoint arrays are properly sorted. Because even if they get properly sorted right now in Unity, there's no guarantee they will be later. So, we need to implement array.sort on the array once it's populated and into the array of sort, we pass a method. In this method, we compare the names of the of the members of the arrays, the waypoints. So just copy this, this, and this, and that means we need to make sure that the waypoints are in alphabetical 
order. So I did this to uh, illustrate. But this should also work. But if you do it with numbers, sometimes it messes up. So if it doesn't work, just do this here as well. Great. So then we can also move the starting position to be more in between our two starting points. Just like that. And now we have to make some changes to the Waves script as well. First of all, rename the old Waves timer to Balloon Timer and Next Balloon. Once you change these, you will get errors wherever it was used. So, make sure to change this to Balloon Timer and then just copy paste balloon timer into the errors and then you do the same for the next balloon then we have the balloon limiter meaning we will allow 20 balloons per wave right now you can change this in the editor since it's public and then we have the waves timer which is the same functionality as the balloons timer it's just way slower it will take 20 seconds right now in between waves. So when we send the balloons, we check that the balloon timer is less than time that time and the waves timer is less than time that time. If so, send the balloon and increase the balloon account, uh, the, the balloons count by one. And these lines of code checks that if the balloon count meaning the amount of balloons divided by the balloons per wave if the remainder of these two divided by each other equals zero this will be true this is called the remainder in programming meaning if this was 20 divided by 19 the, the remainder would, would be one since there's one left but if you divide 20 by 20 or 5 by 5 or whatever there will be a zero remainder meaning these are the same and the waves timer is less than time that time then reset the waves timer so the waves timer will be 20 seconds of uh, ahead of time that means 20 seconds later it will be smaller than time that time and this will be true again. This is how we create the waves. Okay, so let's test this out now and see what we got so far. Yeah, I mean, we're getting close. <laughs> 